This year's recipient, Samuel A. Simon, Chairman of Amplify Public Affairs, has worked throughout his career to articulate mutual interest and common ground for media advocacies and the telecommunications industry. Mr. Simon's work for media justice dates back to 1970, when he was one of the first public interest lawyers to work for Ralph Nader. That 40-year friendship continues to this day. In 1978, Sam took over as director of what was then called the National Citizens Committee for Broadcasting. In 1983, the organization was transformed to address emerging media and was renamed the Telecommunications Research and Action Center. In 1986, Sam founded the public affairs firm Issue Dynamics Incorporated, which was devoted to building bridges on policy issues. While at IDI, Sam facilitated negotiations that resulted in landmark public interest provisions in the 1996 Telecommunications Act around the E-rate, in which Sam helped to hammer out the deal between major telecoms and educational groups that led to discounted rates for broadband services to schools. He also worked with the disabilities community and the telecommunications industry to secure the first post-ADA legislative provision requiring a specific set of products and services be made accessible to people with disabilities. Since the mid-1980s, in addition to his leadership at TRAC and NCL, Sam has been one of the most ardent supporters of OC Inc. For years, he worked closely with Everett Parker and has continued to support Everett's successors, including Robert Chase and now Ben Guess. That's why we are so pleased to present our 2009 Donald H. McGannon Award to an industry advocacy bridge builder, Samuel A. Simon. Thank you, uh, Reverend Guffey, Ben, um, for this uh, very meaningful and distinctive honor, particularly to get an award um, named after Donald McGannon. Uh, I'm actually find it um, um, unusual or difficult to be, I don't know about difficult, but uh, I'm going to use a word that I was advised not to, surreal, to be here. Um, because it was 28 years ago when Dr. Parker and I sat down and hammered out and conceived the idea of the McGannon Award. In fact, notwithstanding what's in your program, um, I was privileged to, be, to present the very first McGannon Award uh, posthumously to Don himself, handing the plaque to his widow during the second annual award ceremony held at Everett, if you recall, that year in the Waldorf Astoria Hotel. Don McGannon himself was a maverick. He eschewed the conventional to run a broadcasting business that exemplified the highest and best use of the public airwaves. And he devoted his personal life to leading an organization that was primarily devoted to creating economic opportunity to, people, uh, to inner city poor, the National Urban League. And as an aside, what Donald McGannon might actually be best known for is his definition of leadership. He said that leadership is action, not position. Just Google his name, you'll see 95% of the hits refer to this particular insight. We live in a time when the media landscape bears very little resemblance to that of 28 or 30 years ago, much less in the mid-50s. With a multiplicity of outlets, the hundreds of cable channels, the all news networks, and now thousands of citizen journalists known as bloggers and YouTube journalists. Where's Andy Schwartzman? The media reformers of 30 years ago might declare, want to declare victory, pack up the bags and go home. Yet I think few of us would believe that that to be the case because I think our biggest fears have also been realized with the complete deregulation of the media 
and the virtual elimination of any meaningful public interest obligations. Radio, TV, cable, cable stations increasingly have become megaphones for the personal political philosophies of the owners and the host. Money, profit, and political ideology, not the public interest, seem to be what counts the most. Our civil society is being challenged when the media becomes a tool to agitate, denigrate, and then promote the personal agenda, agendas of those privileged to have access to it. Cable, broadcast, and internet platforms are used to ridicule and humiliate values that bear little resemblance to those modeled by Donald McGannon. So I'm pleased then to see the legacy of our work reincarnated in the Office of Communications, Inc., launched with the So We Might See Alliance for Media Justice. We may or may not be able to get a regulatory scheme enacted that can help fix the problems that face the media today, and they include the absence of any mandate for serving the public interest, nor boundaries of any sort limiting the extremes to which some are willing to go. What so we might see, the Alliance of Diverse Religious Organizations adds, is a voice with moral authority to the struggle for media justice. I now want to take a quick minute to talk about some people who are here. And based on the program, I was actually granted a minute or two to talk about somebody who wasn't supposed to be here. I'm actually going to keep cut some of those remarks. I want to particularly thank my wife, Susan, and my three sisters, two from Dallas and one from Indianapolis, who've come up to be here today. My daughter, Rachel, my uh, cousins and nephews and nieces and uh, friends, I, I really, it is very meaningful. By the way, my sisters and I call ourselves the S team. I also want to thank and acknowledge Rabbi Shirley Idelson, who is Dean of the New York School of Hebrew Union College Jewish Institute of Religion, and of course, Commissioner Copps, who is also here from the FCC. I was going to say this is the first lecture that which Everett wasn't here, but he's obviously here. And Everett, um, Started, started out our relationship when he really wasn't very happy to see me in 1978 pop onto the media reform scene. I was clearly an unwelcomed interloper. Over time, not only did he accept me, but he became a mentor, then a friend, and now someone with whom I have a loving relationship. He is the one who put Ben's predecessor, Bob Chase and I, together um, about a decade ago, and we formed a partnership, so I was able to help support OC Inc.'s office in Washington, D.C., and to help create the lecture and award ceremony in Washington that has gone on for the last 10 years. And importantly, the relationship that's been able to continue so that I have now become a senior fellow in this amazing new organization and initiative that is there to help change the world called Intersections. And I want to thank those from Intersections that are here today uh, as well. Everett, I'm so glad that you're here today. And I know if we give you the mic, and who knows, we might, that you would demand that we continue to focus our urgent work on holding those with our hands on the lever levers of power in the media responsible and accountable for serving in the public interest. Thank you.